Hello, it's John Heaton, and uh, instead of doing a, my normal album review, today I'm going to discuss, I'm going to compare Pepper with Mystery Tour, because uh, they're both albums which came out in the same year, and there's always kind of heated discussions on the VC and elsewhere about which ones people prefer and the pros and cons of each, so I thought I'd have a quick discussion on on that topic. Uh, before I do, I just want to show you, I did separate reviews of both of these albums, so I'm not going to repeat myself with going through, reviewing each album in detail, but I just want to show you a few things in my collection. So this is my mono pepper. I'm not sure if it's a first pressing, but it's it's got the original inner sleeve. Um, and the inserts as well. So it's not in brilliant condition, but uh, I think it's a UK original or late 60s anyway. Um, interestingly enough, that album has not been re released on mono, uh, only on stereo, or if it was released on mono, it was part of the box set, and you can't really get it separately very easily at all, which is kind of disappointing. Uh, the new vinyl I'm talking about. This is a picture disc which I picked up. So German picture disc from 1978 uh, which is very nice to have. It's the kind of thing when you see in a shop it's pretty hard to resist. This is the new vinyl. Uh, superbly, superb new mix from Giles Martin. He's really done us all proud uh, with his taking what his father had already achieved and just taking it to even newer heights. And I won't do a separate review on the new mix, but suffice to say, it's closer to the mono mix than the original stereo in that uh, the songs are more powerful. They're less, there's less separation of the channels and the guitars are brought, um, brought to the fore, particularly on the title track, I noticed. And just the vocals as well, like the backing vocals on With A Little Help uh, you listen to it and there's some things which, I'm not sure if it's true, but it's some things which either sound new or enhanced, should we say, versus the original production. Anyway, a thoroughly worthy release. And then on the Mystery Tour front, I have my original, uh, sorry, this is the new mono, which uh, is available separately. Not not that cheaply, but uh, at least you can get it. And I want to get all of the Beatles albums on mono. I maybe should have got the mono box set, but I didn't. But as I say, uh, yeah, Pepper's unavailable, and the early ones are available. You can find those relatively easily, but uh, but not not Pepper. So that's the mono, the new mono mystery tour. This is my original UK stereo so this album came out in 1976 even though it had been released in 67 in America and was had long been available on import EMI finally woke up and released it in the UK in 76 and this is a I think it's a US pressing but it's not an original it's on the Apple label which is interesting and I think I asked Joe what, how that dates it, and I think he said late 60s. So probably not a first pressing, but uh, pretty close to a first pressing, and this is stereo capital US. So those, those are my copies of the various albums. Um, so which one do we, does one prefer? Well, it's totally subjective, of course, and it depends on the mood you're in. Um, I'll just say a few points in favor of Pepper. Uh, I think the title track is stronger than Mystery Tour, uh, by, by quite a bit actually. I think Mystery Tour is a little bit of a disappointment. and It's not a great song in my opinion, it does a, quite a good job for the, for the movie and for, as an opener I suppose, but I've never warmed to it in the same way as uh, the title track on Pepper and the reprise as well, it's just a masterpiece. and. The second point to note is the George track on Pepper, I think, is a stronger track within you without you than the George track on here, which is Blue Jay Way. Um, not everyone would agree with that, maybe, 
I didn't used to. I used to hate within you without you when I first bought Pepper. I used to skip it or, or moan, complain about it. And uh, <laughs> it's funny because now, uh, as one gets older, one appreciates the lyrics, and it, it's just basically a masterpiece. And uh, remember John Lennon speaking very highly of that track in 1980 in the Playboy interview. Uh, and then Paul's kind of vaudeville track. On one on each album, and when I'm 64 is, I think, better in in all respects than you mothers should know. Certainly lyrically, it's more charming, and uh, I know it's an old song which he wrote back in the 50s even, but uh, I just think it's slightly superior. Although you mothers should know, we're, we're quibbling here because the Beatles this is so. Your mothers should know is still a masterful track, and virtually every track they put out was of supreme quality. So. If we're, if we're differentiating between Pepper and Mystery Tour, it's going to be by quite a fine margin. Either way, I would have thought. Um, on the con side, Pepper has possibly been overexposed, overhyped, overpraised over the years. It keeps on, it used to, not maybe not so much anymore, but it used to feature as number one in the top albums of all time. Paul Gambaccini, uh, book I remember from 87 and the, the first version in 77 it was number one in both both of those and I think even more recently it still tends to be very high so but possibly overhyped and overexposed and maybe not the album but uh, in terms of the critics saying good things about it uh, maybe they've gone a bit over the top over the years and People like Keith Richards get pissed off and and react against it by saying negative things about Pepper, which is ridiculous. But anyway, that's another story. In favour of Mystery Tour, you've got possibly John Lennon's one of his biggest masterpieces of all time, I Am the Walrus. It's just an absolutely brilliant piece of lyrics and nonsense lyrics, maybe, but uh, Alice in Wonderland type stuff. And just a hypnotic, uh, simple song with just a, a few chords, but used tremendous, to tremendous effect. And uh, just a highlight of the Beatles catalogue overall, no question. Fool on the Hill is, is one of those sublime Paul ballads, which is uh, a highlight of Mystery Tour for sure. Although on Pepper we did have She's Leaving Home, which I've come to appreciate even more than I did before with the new mix. Uh, I think they're both masterpieces, so I wouldn't like to pick one one over the other. Maybe the arrangement of She's Leaving Home is there's more thought gone into it. And there was perhaps the slight impression that Pepper, after Pepper, the Beatles were a little bit tired and uh, failed to give the same sense of enthusiasm to their work after after Pepper, and certainly the, the collaboration, because uh, Brian died shortly after Pepper, so uh, maybe the collaboration between John and Paul started dipping a bit. Um, I know Mystery Tour was Paul's idea, and maybe John and George went along with it reluctantly somewhat. So that might have been reflected a little bit in the, in the music, but we're talking minor. Uh, Baby You're a Rich Man is a forgotten gem of the Beatles catalogue, as, uh, as Joe said in his recent review, it's uh, very underplayed, this one, and hence it uh, tends to be one's, one of one looks forward to hearing it when one puts on the album, because it hasn't been played to death like some of the singles. That, that's, that's slightly, uh, I wouldn't say annoying, but uh, there's a couple of singles on here which have been overplayed, like All You Need Is Love and Hello Goodbye, which uh, don't need to hear too many times again. So. Obviously, this album was not released as an album originally intended by the Beatles. It was an EP, uh, which, which is also a, an unsatisfactory format. Um, uh, they just didn't have enough songs to fill up a whole LP at the time, and so Capitol quite rightly took the singles and the B-sides from the year 67 and made this superb album. And. Uh, one can quibble over Capitol's jumbling of tracks on the earlier Beatles albums, but this is their greatest contribution to Beatles history in my opinion.
it really does make it because that EP is very unsatisfactory as a product and much I think it's virtually been forgotten now um, and everyone everyone thinks of the album as an album and although it is strictly a compilation uh, it's a bloody good compilation and it's and it's got the continuity lacking on a lot of compilations because all of the material from this album is taken from the same year so 50 years on which we are it doesn't really sound like a compilation at all maybe to a new Beatles fan it wouldn't sound like a compilation uh, whatsoever so uh, the other thing to note about this album is there's no Ringo track which is a little bit of a shame but there you go uh, maybe Pepper Song for Song is a stronger album if one thinks of Lucy in the Sky and with a little help and uh, a day in the life uh, but there's not much to choose and we love both albums and we come back to them often I just thought I'd uh, discuss this with you this afternoon thank you for watching